Hey duck fans, Kurt here. Welcome to yet another fish duck one-on-one. -on -one. Well, you know, there's an old saying that says you can't go home again, but Tony Coker totally proves that wrong. Big number 43, all six foot four, 240 of them in his playing days. He was a local talent out of Lebanon, and he joined his fellow hometown buddy Eric Castle in Eugene in the early 90s as a linebacker, integral on special teams and in the back rotation. After metaphorically helping to build the program as part of the team in the early 90s, Tony physically literally helped to build the program, working in construction on all the great new toys that the University of Oregon now has, all the f athletic facilities. We'll get in, in, into that in just a minute, but first of all, Tony, how you doing? Great, and thanks for having me, and I appreciate your sight. Oh, awesome. Well, thank you so much. Well, you played uh, from 90 through 93, and you, you were on the team in 94, but you were hurt. Um, I know that you grew up alongside Eric Castle, who's one of the all-time great ducks. Um, was he the main reason why you chose to come to Eugene? Uh, what other schools were recruiting you, and what ultimately made you decide to be a duck? Um, I got re I, I got recruited by um, most of the Pac-10 schools, and I turned down the California schools early. It just uh, wasn't in the cards for me to go to California. And then uh, Washington schools hung around for a while, and um, and Utah as well. Uh, you know, Eric was a reason I went to Oregon because I had spoke with him and he had told me about the program and the direction they were going and uh, and then obviously they had been to the, the Independence Bowl the year before and they just had things going good. Um, they were my favorite team in the state at the time. Uh, my dad and I would go hunting and I'd listen to their games while we were up hunting in the mountains <laughs> and you know I just took a liking to them and uh, I wanted to get away from home, but not too far away from home. So Corvallis was just too doggone close. So, <laughs> um, so yeah, I just uh, ended up there, and, and uh, it was uh, one of the best decisions I've made. Well, quite a different setting from what it is today that you've helped, helped to build. But what do you remember of Oregon's facilities at the time when you first came to Eugene? My first year there was the first year we actually utilized the, the, the Casanova Center, and that was uh, pretty neat, actually. Um, it was uh, because I remember the year before – when I was recruited there, they, they they showed us what was being built, but we actually saw the locker rooms and the weight rooms underneath the stadium, uh, <laughs> underneath the end zones, the stadium seating of, of the end zones, actually, and they're <laughs> very small and very confined. So, I've um, heard about them, yeah. <laughs> yeah, a little stinky. Um, but uh, so it was uh, it was brand new. The, the Len Casanova Center was brand new when I went there in uh, the summer of 1990. And uh, so it, it was fun. It was nice. But still, like, like you said, to where it is now from where it was, it's, it's, pretty, uh, it's pretty impressive. Even by football standards, you were big for a linebacker. 6'4", 240, that, that's a large guy. You get 6'4", 240 running full speed on a kickoff or, or punt return, that, that's a lot of momentum. <laughs> yeah, it is. Yeah, it's hard to stop, you know. <laughs> and, and, of course, I wouldn't stop till I got to where I was going, so... Yeah, it was it was just it, and those are the days. Those are my funnest times. I mean, you know, um, it, you know, I paid for it. Obviously, paid for it physically a little bit. You know, I had some some uh, injuries and stuff, but uh, I wouldn't trade that for anything in the world. That was the Rich Brooks era. The team was known for defense. These days, it's offense, offense, offense. Everyone <laughs> thinks about it with the Ducks. It's kind of a role reversal. But in those days, the Oregon Ducks defense. You know, Oregon's identity in that early 90s era was it wasn't always the top rated recruits. Sometimes it was like the, the second tier guys who had a chip on their shoulder and they may not be the best guys, but they're going to play 60 minutes and fight and scratch and claw all the way through. And that defense exemplified it. You were surrounded by some great, great linebackers in your playing days. Joe Farwell, James Batista, Ernest Jones. Mm -hmm. um, just some fantastic players. So what was it like just being able to play alongside guys that, that you look at and you're like, these guys could play with just about anybody? Well, and and, and it, it's funny you say that because I, I looked up to Joe, obviously. Joe was the – you talked about my size. I was a good size linebacker. Well, he's very undersized. <laughs> yeah. Those guys just had, just had a, heart of, a heart of a tiger. I mean, all of them. I mean, David Massey would come in and Ernest, obviously – Ernest was amazing how he grew physically and mentally with 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 uh, with where he was when I got there and then where he ended up. Mm -hmm. um, you know, those guys just literally just by their uh, their performance at practice and on the field, they led by example. I mean, you didn't need them 
I mean, not that they wouldn't get in your face or hoop and holler or, or you know, get after you. They, they didn't almost need to because you just saw the desire in them and the fire in them. So, and and I was the, I was falling right behind them. I'm like, hey, these, these guys are for real. They know what they're doing. I'm going to jump right in on this. What are some of your favorite memories or maybe a favorite memory of your experience as a student athlete, either on the field or off of it? Well, I, I, I think what, what people don't understand is, and this is, I'll bring some light to it, is the, the the fact that when I was recruited to Oregon to play football, I signed a football letter of intent with the, with the possibility of playing basketball at the University of Oregon, too, because they recruited me for basketball, too. But once you get there, the, these dual or triple sport athletes, they're amazing people um, because football is a full-time just because you're not in season, you're still doing things that are for football. You're doing workouts. You're doing right. certain mandatory things that go along with it, even in the off season. So um, that being said, it's very time consuming, and you have to learn very quickly <laughs> uh, time management skills because you don't have a lot of time to do a lot of other things besides go to school and, and do your football. Uh, granted, off season is easier than during the mm -hmm. season. You know, there's lots of good memories out there, but it's uh, and not always do football players hang out together outside of practice. I met some great students there at the University of Oregon that were not the weren't athletes at all. So it's not that we're just all hanging out and we're just this huge fraternity. We love each other to death and we're teammates and we're like family. But you have time to meet other people, and some of those friends are just dear to me now that uh, as my ex-teammates. You were able to play 91 through 93. 94, unfortunately, that's the year that everyone remembers, and you couldn't participate. Yeah. You kind of missed out on the senior year. Uh, obviously, that year stands out for a lot of reasons. Uh, but how difficult was, was that for you, being that it's your senior year, it's your chance to really shine, you can't play, and then you see the team go on to just unprecedented heights? Well, first and foremost, I was very proud of my teammates and the team at the time because I, st I consider them all my teammates because I'd, I'd sweated with them and went through practice and went through games the previous year with them. Um, a very tough decision to make. I remember very well walking into Coach Brooks's office and we, we, we had a, you know, we had a sit down visit and uh, we talked over options and obviously I'd went through my second back surgery. Uh, just before then, I had uh, I had set out uh, spring practice the year before, and fall ball was coming up, and uh, you know I wanted to go down. I wanted to go visit with him and talk to him about the, our options. And at that time, the best option for me was to uh, I really I really wanted to sit out one year. I had already, and I, I think it was because I'd already redshirted that I couldn't. It wasn't an option really. Mm -hmm. So I just uh, you know. Took a couple days, thought about it, chewed on it, went back a couple days later and visited with them some more and just thought it was uh, in my best interest to, to go ahead and call our career, you know, because it's a back thing and you start thinking about what's next, you know, right. so I, I had rehabbed from one and played, maybe could I have done the second one and played, maybe so, but you know, it's, it's nothing I regret, Not, I think it was the best decision at the time for me. I went and did what I wanted to do, played some good college football in, a, in the, one of the toughest conferences in the nation. Um, so it was uh, no ill will or no hard feelings, and uh, we both understood, you know. So very awkward, though. <laughs> very, it was very awkward. That year was an awkward year for me. You're in a unique position because after your playing career was over, you ended up working in construction, and you've now had the unique opportunity to go from being a player associate with the University of Oregon to now help build their facilities. How often do you, when you're working on something, do you just get deja vu? You're like, man, I remember when I was out here in uniform, you just see Coach Rad off to the side, like, hey, man, what's yeah, going on? Yeah, it's, it's, it, it's amazing. I talk to Coach Aliotti uh, quite a bit when I'm actually working on site because we see each other. Um, or any of the co Coach Greatwood, uh, Coach Radcliffe, um, any of the coaches that I play with, you know, obviously I have a relationship with them still, and we, we you know, we get a visit and everything. Um, but I, by no, by no means, do I work for the company I work for because they're huge duck donors. I, I mean, I work for uh, Wildish Construction Company, which their family owned very much. Duck Packers donate tons of not only work but money to the program, and and they're very proud of that. And uh, so it's makes it that much easier to work for them obviously but um it is fun working on on these uh on these projects that we get we, we you know we did the under dirt work for the mo center 
we did a joint venture with uh, Hunt Construction, so it was Hunt Wildest Venture for the expansion of the um, the arena, which which we did pipe all the way around it, and because I'm a pipe superintendent for him, which I just fell into. I I didn't I didn't never you know I was kind of after college, you kind of find your way, and I went here and there, and but I just kind of this fell into my lap, and um, and I just thrived at this uh, construction industry. Uh, you know, especially the supervisor part of it and the superintendent part of it and looking at the numbers and, and the um, challenging aspects of it to build these projects. I mean, because it is challenging, but it is also very fun, I would say, to work around camp. And we actually last uh, last year did the job to move all the utilities for the brand new football office building. So there's been six or seven pretty good projects I've been involved in around the university there, especially at Austin Stadium. Um, so I enjoy it. I, I mean, it's it's like a, you know, it's it's kind of like a present in my work to me, you know. I, I enjoy doing it. It's like, oh, I get to go over there and work? Great. This is going to be fun. It's a very yeah. unique position that, that you're in. Uh, and it also has to be fascinating remembering back from your days as a player. Now you're working on the Mo Center and the Casanova Center expansion and Autzen and PK Park and you have to be at times sit, sit around thinking, yeah, I wish I'd had this stuff when I was playing. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> well, that and the and the uniform. That yeah, I'm just like <laughs> some of these uniforms. The, those those helmets. The first game, favorite of all time so far, by the way. But uh, you know, I try and tell people maybe that I'm working with or the guys that work for me. You know where that John Serber Serber uh, youth facility is. I, we practiced there. <laughs> oh, no, you did. And I'm like, yeah, we did. That was a big deal. So everything's just grown up around there. But uh, it, uh, you know, you go now through the through the locker rooms and stuff. And even though it's still in the cast center, they've changed the whole locker, uh, locker room around. They've done a lot of stuff there. And uh, it's it's good to see. I am I mean, yeah, granted, wow, I wish we, we had this stuff when, uh, when I played. Uh, 90 through 93, 94-ish. Everyone remembers the Independence Bowl year 89 as kind of the moment when the program started the, this next step. And then everyone jumps forward to 1994 for the Rose Bowl. People kind right. of for, forget the years that you played in between. Why should people remember the teams that, that you played on, those 90 through 93 years? I, I believe those were some gritty years. I, I truly do. So... We followed up that 89 season that, you know, my first year there was 90. So we went to the Freedom Bowl. Uh, a decent year, actually, for Oregon. Um, uh, lost to a Colorado State team, I believe. And then we had, and, and this is where I think it's, this is what I'm almost proud of in a weird way. We had a really rough season. So we, the Ducks went to two bowl games back to back. Then the next season we had, we went through the, Quarterback carousel injuries of, everywhere. Injuries decimated us, but during that time, I mean, we were down and out. We lost a lot of games. We had a rough year. Um, there were some long rides home, long <laughs> airplane flights home, and uh, but never did you never. No one ever gave up. No one. We all knew that this was going for a greater cause. Um, we kept working hard. We knew that uh, the tide was going to turn in our way, and we. So that right there, I think. Maybe some programs could have just dove back down and be and been satisfactory with the two um, previous years bowl bowl games, but we weren't. Mm -hmm. And then the off season, people healed up. We worked hard in the off season. We had great leadership on the team. You mentioned the especially on the defense, you know. And Daniel O'Neill uh, stepped up, and the offensive guys stepped up as leaders. Um, had a great off season, I thought. And then the next year, of course, we get back to Shreveport, Mosier City, Louisiana. Yep. So then, so we kind of fell off. The wheel fell off, so to speak. But you know what? We stopped and changed the tire and kept going, and we and and we didn't stop. And I think more than anything, that year after the Freedom Bowl, when we just had that down year, I thought it, I really think it was a gut check time. We built some character with some folks, and uh, and so I thought it almost lit the fire again even more so and then so we go to the independence bowl and then the you know the rose bowl and uh yeah i thought that was the gut check time and that's why i think people because it could have went the other way mm -hmm. real easily so i think that that one down year where things didn't go our way lots of injuries i mean you can blame it on a lot of stuff it's just a bad year but the character the people that were leading our team and the players of our team wouldn't let it go that way 
So that's what I think is uh, it's kind of a key turning point. You know, it could have went the other way real fast, real easily. So, yeah. but we had believers and we had uh, strong-willed people and uh, we had a lot of character on the team. Yeah, those those years I think of as the growing pain years, and the '94 year and everything after was kind of the payoff of the struggle that you guys went through through the years that you played. I agree with that. So, how would you like people, Duck fans, to remember Tony Coker? Hopefully, I brought a little bit to the University of Oregon, and they're building to where they are now. You know, I I just hopefully people say, hey, you know, you were part of that. And, uh, you know, and, and I kind of hang my hat on that, you know, I'm a, I'm a very proud duck and, um, you know, I, I don't want no troop trophies or cheering crowds at the end of the day. I just, you know, if people know who I am or can appreciate a little bit that I, that what, what I did with, for the program would be great. And you know what? I'm a, I'm, you know, now all I want to be known for is just being a good dad to my dog. So I'm just a regular guy. I mow my yard. I'm nothing special. People still come up to me and ask about football and this and that and I'm more into don't you got a secret fishing spot or something <laughs> so uh, it, it's in the past I, I had so much fun doing it and Oregon fans by far the greatest fans are you know I talked to so many people that have been through those years and stuck with us you know granted you know there as well as I do there's some bandwagoners but we have a very large root of people that have been with us through the thick and thin and uh I meet those people and talk to them quite a bit and appreciate them, you know. So, uh, yeah, I just, uh, you know, I'm so proud to be a duck. I'm, I'm the the choice to go to the University of Oregon, one of the best choices I ever made in my life. Tony Coker, we will certainly remember you for all that you did on the football field, for all you've done to help the university thereafter. Uh, your your signature is etched on all the grand buildings that are, are out by Autzen Stadium now. And just for, for being a great duck. Thank you, Tony Coker, for the time. Really appreciate it. You know what? It's my pleasure. I And, and I thank you for the opportunity to, to, to be on your show. Well, terrific. Well, Tony Coker, University of Oregon Ducks linebacker, 90 through 93, now an all-pro dad. Go Ducks. <laughs> Go Ducks.